In this video, I'm going to give an overview and a user guide to the key features of the PlantPlaces.com mobile app, which is the app that you see here on the left screen. The agenda. First, how do we get PlantPlaces.mobile on our Android device? It is a free program. We simply have to go to the Google Play Store and get it, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Then we'll take a look at some of the more popular features. First of all, the ability to search for plants by color using either your phone's camera or the image gallery that's on your phone. Then we'll look at how to GPS a plant and look at your sustainability report card. We'll also take a look at how to see a map of your plants both on the device and on the plantplaces.com website. Now the plantplaces.com mobile app, you can also post plants for sale that appear on plantplaces.com and you can record bloom dates that you see for plants, but we'll cover that in a separate video. First, to get plantplaces.com, navigate to the Google Play Store from your Android device and simply search on plant places, all one word. Look for the P, click on the P. Plantplaces.com mobile is free to install and use, so simply click install and the application will install for you on your device. Once the app is installed, open it and the first screen that you will see is the search by color screen. If you want to navigate to another feature, there's menu navigation across the top and on the side. And then if you want to GPS a plant, you can also use a quick nav button on the bottom that will take you straight to the GPS a plant screen. But let's start with search by color. For search by color, you provide a photo to the app. The app will look at the photo and find up to the 16 most common colors. Then you can select one of those colors and it will show you plants that match that color. This photo can come from your image gallery if you like. Simply click on this folder button here. Or you can use the camera. Simply click on the camera toggle. Snap to take a picture, choose OK, and in just a moment you see that plantplaces.com mobile has found, in this case, six colors from this picture. I'm going to click on the bright yellow, and a list of plants that has that color appears. It will first appear with a list of plants, and then it downloads the images uh, and shows those as soon as they are ready. So you can click on a single plant to see more details on that plant. And that's a look at search by color. Now if you want to GPS a plant, remember that you can use the menu to get to GPS a plant right up at the top here. So I select GPS a plant, and this brings up the GPS a plant screen. One nice thing about using plantplaces.com mobile is that it already has a dictionary of almost 6,000 unique genus, species, and cultivars. So the first time you load this screen, it will need to download those names, which will take just a few moments. You'll see a dialog box come up. You can either wait for it to go away or hit cancel and make it go away. After that appears, you notice that you can start typing and it will autocomplete based on this dictionary of plants that it already has. So for example, we can simply select Eastern Redbud. Location is similar. It is also an autocomplete field, so you notice if I start typing Cincinnati, it will find locations that have the word Cincinnati in it. For example, uh, the University of Cincinnati. So there are several predefined locations, but if the location where you're GPSing plants is not already in there, don't worry. Just go ahead and type in a new location, and then you create a new location. Description, you can type whatever you want to type. Uh, a lot of times I'll put maybe a month and a year where I saw it or maybe some other kind of uh, something like it was very sunny out when I took this picture, so on and so forth. Then from there, click the camera button to take pictures. You can take multiple pictures of a plant, and this is an emulator, so uh, naturally it looks a little, it doesn't look just like a plant would, but you can take several pictures of these plants like so. So we click and each time we take a new picture, uh, the thumbnail will appear down on our GPS a plant screen. Now, a couple of considerations. Uh, first of all, if I want to save this plant, I will click the Save button, and when I do, it will clear this screen so I can enter another plant. It will also change the background color to green to give us just a little vi a visual stimulus uh, so that we know that our plant was saved. Now, what if I see a new plant and that plant is not in our predefined definition list of plants? Well, guess what? No problem. You can create a new plant here if you want as well. It will take you to an additional screen to confirm that you want to create this new plant. But let's make one up. Let's say Circus Canadensis, and then we'll say Autumn Beauty. Notice that as I'm typing, it doesn't find a match because I'm just making this one up. I put Autumn Beauty in single quotes because that is a cultivar. And then after that, we'll say Autumn Beauty Red Bud, something like that. 
So type away. And then because this is an emulator, I will say it's a little slower than you'll see on your actual device. Your actual device should be much more performant than this. But nonetheless, uh, note what happens. I've just typed this freehand. As soon as I choose tab or I go to another column, it brings up the add a new plant screen and it has already populated the genus, species, and cultivar based on what I typed in. All I need to do is select what type of plant it is. In this case, we can choose tree and hit save. And then it takes me back to the GPS of plant screen with this bland, brand new plant that I have defined. And now I can start taking photos and I can start GPSing this brand new plant. And once again, notice as we get back to the GPS screen, notice that our brand new made up plant uh, appears in our uh, screen up at the top. Now the GPS you see at the top, the GPS by default will update about every 60 seconds. If for some reason you want to hold a GPS location for a little longer, you can simply hit the pause button here and that will hold the GPS at that location. It will not change until you hit play again. This is handy if maybe you want to take a picture from a distance, but you want to know the actual GPS location and you walk up to the tree, you get the GPS location, reasons like that. It's also helpful if you need to refresh the GPS more quickly than 60 seconds. Maybe the GPS location just changed and you've walked a little bit and you want to get a new location. Just hit a quick pause and start and that will tell it to go fetch a new location. Uh, now, when you save these, when you save these plants, they will save locally on your phone, but you can also upload them to plantplaces.com, the website. Let's take a look at a few things we need to consider for that. I'm going to go to the settings screen from the menu. And note that we have username here. Type a username. You can make up any username that you want. We'll say Bob's Plants, something like that. We'll do it with one B. And choose OK. Uh, password is not required at the moment. GPS refresh in seconds, you see that's set to 60. If you want to get a GPS more quickly, you can make that a lower number, like 30 seconds. Uh, the, the trick is that will consume a bit more battery. On the other hand, if you find that 60 seconds is too fast, you can always move that up to 120 seconds, so on and so forth. Filter colors is based on that color search screen. So when you do the search by color, it only shows you colors where we have plants indexed to that color. Uh, auto sync over Wi-Fi. If you leave this box checked, when you leave plant places running on your phone and you plug it in to an outlet and it's connected to Wi-Fi, it will automatically upload all your plant GPS locations and photos to plantplaces.com. Uh, uh, now, the photos actually, you have to have this box checked as well. Upload plant images. If you leave that box checked, it will upload any photos that you take. If you don't want to upload your photos, simply untick that box. Photos on a typical Android device are about 8 to 10 megabytes, and in one day, if you're just GPSing around your house, that's probably not going to be a whole lot. But if you go to a botanical garden and you GPS maybe 100 plants, uh, that can start getting to be a fairly large amount of data, which is why that's optional. Uh, so. Uh, fill out the username. You don't have to, but it's a good idea uh, because if you do fill out the username, you can get a sustainability report. Uh, AutoSync over Wi-Fi, you can use that option. The other option is to go back here and just press this upload button and that will upload your plants on demand to plantplaces.com. Now, what about seeing the plants that you've GPSed? Well, there are several options. First of all, you can click on this folder and it will bring you to a screen which shows you all the plants that you've GPSed and you can even use the search up above to filter down. You see here we have just one uh, Circus canadensis eastern redbud, the very first one that we GPSed. The other option is, if you specified a username and you uploaded your plants, you can go to the plantplaces.com sustainability index and simply search by your username. I take a look here and you see several plants that I've GPSed over the ages and we can see that they're all viewable here on this website. Within the app, we can also go to this map of plants feature, which brings up a Google map, and it will show us a couple different things. It will show us plants that we have GPS, in other words, you as a user of this app, it will show you those in blue. For example, this plant here, you can click, and then here's our Eastern Redbud Circus Canadensis with the GPS location that I provided when we GPSed it. I can click there, and that's going to take me to the detail page on plantplaces.com. You can take a look at the blue dots, the ones that you've GPSed, and then the red dots represents the plants that were GPSed and are present on plantplaces.com. As a matter of fact, 
You can find a similar option on plantplaces.com on the website. If you simply click this little geolocation icon here, it takes you to a map of all the GPS plants on plantplaces.com around the world. Uh, so for instance, we can click here. Uh, we can go up to Sydney, Nova Scotia. We can click there and we can see more details just in Sydney, Nova Scotia uh, of all the plants that have been GPS. So once again, we keep clicking down. You see uh, each of these numbers represents several plants that happen to be in this area. So we can keep clicking down to zoom in uh, until we get to a very specific plant like this one, English Lavender. So the plants that you GPS are visible on the phone and also on the plantplaces.com website. Here you can see an example of a botanical garden that was uh, populated with many mapped plantplaces.com plants and then also the plant that we just mapped ourselves. So several dots there. So this has been a look at plantplaces.com mobile, some of the key features. It's also capable of submitting plants for sale to the plantplaces.com website and submitting bloom dates. We'll cover those in a separate video, but nonetheless, this covered the major features of search by plant, a GPS of plant, and map of plants. I hope that you find this app useful and I look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you.